Uh, our scripture reading is from Matthew. Uh, and uh, just before this, uh, Jesus was questioned by the Pharisees about why his disciples didn't wash their hands before they eat and uh, breaking the tradition of the elders. Jesus uh, didn't answer their question. Rather, he asked them, uh, why do they break one of the commandments? Uh, whereas it says, you should honor your father and mother. Uh, a tradition had, um, or teaching or interpretation had come along where you could say, well, I gave everything to God, so I have nothing left for you, mom. Sorry, mom. Yeah, Jesus was not having it. Uh, in another passage in Matthew, Jesus says, uh, you tithe mint, dill, and cumin, but you ignore the weightier matters of the law, justice. So in this passage, Jesus is uh, telling them that they're focusing on the wrong things um, and saying what really defiles is what comes out of the heart. So let us listen uh, for what the Spirit is calling us or, or trying to illumine in our own lives. This is from Matthew um, 15, and I think I'm going to do 10 through 20. Do you have that slide, Katie? Yep. Uh, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen and understand what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? And he replied, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. And Peter said, explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Whatever comes out of the heart, these are the things that defile them. Uh, I wanted to start by talking about profanity. Yeah, that's a hook. Uh, hopefully my mom is still on uh, because she cusses like a sailor, and she's always felt really bad about it, but I wanted to tell her that... Uh, all those cuss words you say, Mom, uh, there's not a lot about that in the Bible. Where are you? Are you still here? She probably is dying. Um, okay, so she doesn't, she, she doesn't say a lot of cuss words. It's funny, uh, when people find out I'm a pastor, uh, they often apologize because they have, had said a, a cuss word, and I'm, I find it fascinating that uh, how infatuated we are or obsessed uh, the church has been historically with little things. Uh, even the fact that we uh, call cussing profanity. If, if you hear the word profanity, it is uh, solely in, in uh, colloquial speak is referring to using obscene language. But the word profane doesn't mean that at all. It's uh, really an invention of uh, the Puritans to associate profane simply and only with language. Profane is about saying, taking something that is sacred and not treating it as such. Before the temple, it's profane. It's a lot easier to focus on the little things, um, card playing, you know, this is, it's easy to pick on uh, historical examples, uh, you know, we don't play cards, you know, never mind the poor and the destitute, but it, we didn't play cards last night. Or, uh, 
one of my favorite movies, Footloose, you know, the dancing, you know, as long as no one's dancing, all is well. I mean, we can be uh, racist and hateful, and, uh, but we're not going to dance. Um, it's easy to, to find things uh, that make us feel better about ourselves, that make us feel um, like we're pious. It's hard to identify what those things are that are um, as superficial as the examples that I gave because they're so close to us. They are our traditions sometimes. Um, the traditions are great, but when tradition becomes more important than the weightier matters of the law, when we focus on the small things internally uh, within our church and don't look to how uh, our role as an exhibiting the kingdom of heaven, how we are uh, demonstrating that in the world, well, we have focused on the wrong thing that defiles. Remember, to defile or if something is profane means that we have treated something as common that is really sacred. What defiles is when you or I treat God's good creation carelessly. When we don't recognize the image of God in our brothers and sister siblings, in all of humanity, we are defiled. We are defiled. You know, the, uh, uh, it's taught in liberation theology that, uh, that the oppressor suffers, loses his or her own humanity by oppressing. This is the same concept. When you uh, bear false witness, murder or theft, you are losing your own humanity because you're not living into your humanness when you deny the humanness of your neighbor. I'm going to jump to uh, our loves because what we love, what we desire informs how we treat our neighbors. If we love ourselves too much, uh, we don't honor the sacred in others. Instead, others are used for our own gain. Others can be collateral damage. Others uh, can be used and then thrown out. You can bear false testimony. You can steal. You can uh, not treat your marriage as sacred. And in the process, you have lost a bit of who God created you to be. You have defiled yourself. You have broken the uh, connection in between the divine and the human. We have uh, disordered loves. We have uh, loves that we believe will satisfy us. And sometimes that's power, sometimes that's wealth, um, sometimes it's popularity. Uh, it's loves that, in fact, will never satisfy. The, uh, our tastes, our desires, our loves are more engineered than we might think. Culture has a lot more input and influence on our loves and our desires than we might want to admit. My son, Mason, is an addict of Tostitos lime chips. He thinks those lime chips are the best thing since sliced bread. He asked for lime chips for his birthday for the last few years. Um, he wrote uh, Tostitos and 
because they also own McCormick, a spice company, and he suggested that they make the spice with their sister company, McCormick. They make that spice that they put on the lime chips and sell it. Now, what's interesting to me is that that taste of that lime chip was engineered very carefully. Uh, you know, when they develop foods now in this processed food world, uh, they try to make it so that the taste, uh, the flavors uh, burst and then go away quickly, leading you to want another chip. That's why you eat a whole bag. It's not just uh, by accident. We are uh, being engineered to love things. Engineered to uh, maybe love ourselves and fulfill our own desires first. Engineered to love our nation more than our church. To love our political party, to love whatever our news media is telling us, to believe that to be the holy thing. Augustine uh, taught or said, My heart is restless until it rests in thee. Find a way to push aside all of those engineered desires, uh, we will only find satisfaction in God. Uh, Martin Luther said, whatever your heart clings to, uh, that is what you worship. This is a heart matter. Jesus uh, wants people to look deep inside themselves, at their hearts, not about hand washing, although it's fairly ironic right now, given how much hand washing conversations we're having. But hand washing is not what defiles or not. It's about what's in your heart. Uh, John Calvin said that our hearts are like idol factories. Our hearts are so busy trying to find something to worship. Meanwhile, Jesus is teaching us that to worship is to love. To worship is to love. What do you love? In the 50s, there was a book, You Are What You Eat. Uh, this passage would uh, argue otherwise. You know, are what you eat. Instead, you are who, how you treat other people. You are how you love. You are what you love. The heart is uh, referenced some 800 times in the Old and New Testament. And not once is it referring to the organ that we think of as the heart that pumps blood throughout our system. The heart is the seat of the soul. The heart is uh, what is, when we speak of the heart of like, reach deep down inside you. Uh, that, that is uh, where uh, your, your, how you see the world what you most desire, uh, what you hold close to your heart. In Proverbs, we're, we're told to, to guard our hearts. In the passage uh, last week, the disciples were taught to, to take heart, take heart, reach deep inside you, take heart, be courageous. How? What if, this is, but I, uh, I wonder that what if you've reached deep inside you, deep into your heart and in your heart is not this gratitude, that deep in your heart is evil intent. Because Jesus is just naming this. If, it's, if there's evil intent within your heart, what if that is what's there when you reach deep inside and try to muster up uh, 
courage or muster up uh, your better angels. And, and deep inside, there is not joy or love. Well, that's a pretty dark uh, picture to paint. That deep inside is just a desire to defile things, to uh, commit malice and theft and adultery and um, murder, blasphemy, false witness, gossip. Peter asked, explain to us this parable. Now, it, it's, that's a little comical because it's not a parable. Jesus says, uh, what comes out of the mouth defiles. It's pretty straightforward. What Peter, I think, is really fishing for is uh, how do we make sure that in our hearts uh, we aren't doing anything that defiles? How do we make sure that we uh, don't break the connection between the holy and us? The whole clean, unclean, holy and profane uh, in the Levitical tradition, uh, the, the big danger was to put something that was profane in the same proximity as the holy. You know, that's why uh, the purification of any of the priests before they go into the holy of holies. So Peter's asking, how do we avoid, you know, if, if it's not the hand washing that defiles, how do we avoid having that fusion reaction of putting profane and holy in the same space? I, I love uh, in Leviticus uh, 21, there's an example of a priest uh, cannot have a blemish, uh, can't have a, a short appendage or any sort of deformity. And uh, I nicked myself uh, this morning, so I, I guess I can't be a priest. I have a blemish, just one, just one. Though. If it's if it's not our blemishes, then Peter's asking. If it's not hand washing, how do we make sure we don't defile? How do we guard our heart or make sure that we honor everything that is sacred? How do we make sure that we don't break that connection with the divine? We order our loves. And we do that by habit. If your tastes can be engineered, your loves can be engineered. Becoming more loving, you don't think your way into becoming more loving. Certainly we have to know that we are loved and we are beloved. But being a disciple that does not defile God's good creation that treats all of humanity as holy, that takes work, that takes habits. Ordering our desires is something that we do as a community. Getting our hearts right is not an individual endeavor. Getting our hearts focused on godly things and not superficial things can only be done by checking in with each other. Because if deep inside me, I'm holding on to something that is unholy, ungodly, I need my brother and sister to show me another way, to show me that, uh, that what I am railing against is actually God at work. The invitation, the good news, the gospel in this and in that is not judgment. It's not judgment. It's always an invitation, an invitation to be closer to the divine. We're not going to get there by hand washing. We're not going to get there by dressing right on Sunday mornings. I guess we've all been relieved of that. We're going to get there by how we treat our brother and sister in Christ. How we treat not only our brother and sister in Christ, but all of humanity, in fact, all of creation. So guard your heart. 
guard your heart and then guard the heart of the church, the lifeblood of the church, which is that we love as God loves us, and that is our witness to the world. In Colossians, may the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.